Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kathy. Welcome to Unity North Spiritual Center in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. We are an inclusive community. We welcome and accept all people. So whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome with it here and we're glad you're with us today. We're also part of a larger worldwide unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine and we've been holding 131 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity the prayer ministry of the unity movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. Also, um, every week we have a prayer chaplain that prays um, with us after service. So if there's anybody who would like personal prayer, our prayer chaplain today is Wendy, Wendy Erickson, she's waving. And her number will be on chat. You can look at the chat and uh, and her number. And then also we're starting this month um, having a, a healer as well. And so if you would like distant healing, Nancy Helvig, who sometimes prays, she's also a, one of our healers and she'll be uh, available for long distance healing uh, today. So you can call either one of those after service, depending on what your need is. And they'll be happy to either pray with you or, or do healing with you. So, and then um, after service, when we have social time, they'll be around there at the beginning too. And so you can uh, check in with them if you need to. All right. So today um, we have uh, Tracy Roloff and Martha Burkhart filling in for, for Chris, our usual IT person. So they are doing the technical part of the service today and we're happy they're with us. And then also Noel Bean is our worship assistant and glad you're here, Noel. And, um, and then our musician for today is Claire Vanda Cromert. She is a regular and she's a Minnesota based singer songwriter. So we're so happy you're with us, Claire. And Claire's going to start us off with an opening song. So feel free to sing along from home, staying muted. And we just sing from the privacy of our homes at the top of our lungs. Good morning. You have some words up on the screen. So there are no excuses. Here we go.
Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Noel Levine, your worship assistant today. If you're new today or from another uh, country or state, please raise your hand so we can properly greet you. So I see Rebecca and her friend are there. Hey, Rebecca. So I see Alice. Where are you, Alice? Hi, Alice. Alice is an old friend of mine um, from many years ago. Um, she actually was the wife of the minister who performed both of my weddings. <laughs> so we haven't seen each other for a number of years. It's great to see you there, Alice. Rebecca. I'm Candy Tomlinson. I'm from Michigan, and I've uh, introduced myself a couple of times. I'm from Kathy's Church, uh, Unity of the Northwest in Tempe, Arizona. Okay, well, welcome, Candy. Welcome, Rebecca. And Alice, is that the other lady? Glad to have you with us today. We assume everybody is used to Zoom. If you have any questions about a feature or something, please put it in the chat box. Uh, the unmute button will be turned on after the service when there's a social time. So stay connected to Zoom if you want to take part in that sharing time. Now we would take a moment for prayer request. Rather than say them aloud for all to hear, we invite you to speak a name or request silently or aloud in the privacy of your home. We give thanks in advance for these prayers, and we say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Let us stay centered and still for our daily word. The daily word for today, Sunday, June 6, is healing. My thoughts, words, and actions affirm divine life. Today, I give thanks for the constant activity of divine healing life especially when my body is experiencing illness. To bolster my awareness of my capacity for healing, I place my attention on my inherent wholeness. I affirm life in my thoughts, my words, and my actions as I care for my body and meet its needs. My faith assures me that illness is not the truth of me, nor is it my enduring reality. Through my actions, I am affirming wholeness as my true nature and encouraging my healing. Even when I am not facing illness, I greet each day by blessing my body, affirming my wholeness and the ongoing activity of divine life in every organ, every cell. I give thanks for the gift of divine life by giving thanks for my healing and living joyously. From Luke chapter 848, he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. I'd like everybody to join me for the meditation song. The, screen, the uh, words will be up on the screen. a sacred place, a 
So please sit back and relax. Uncross your arms and legs and close your eyes for meditation. Just take a deep breath. And as you exhale, let go of all tension in mind and body. Feel the relaxation move as a wave from the bottom of your feet up through the top of your head and back down from your head down to your feet. Taking another deep breath, breathe in the peace of God and breathe out the peace of God. Once again, breathe in peace, breathe out peace. And say to yourself, there is only peace. There is only love. There is only God. Allow me to speak the words for you, taking them in as your own. I am not disturbed by any outside sounds. I focus only on the presence of God within me. And as my body relaxes more deeply, my mind is free to wander, to journey. So I journey forth. And I find myself in a great hall, a great library. I know this to be the Hall of Records, the records of humankind. And I know that somewhere in this Hall of Records is a book of my life, a book that records all of my thoughts, words, and deeds going back to childhood and beyond to other times. As I take down my book, I hold it for a moment before opening it, knowing it is a sacred book. And that as I open it, whether I'm looking into my past, my present or future, that there is divine guidance there for me. And so opening it now, I ask to turn to a place where I may be guided at this current point in my life that I may read words of wisdom that help me at this time. So I spend just a few moments in the silence, receiving the message that is mine to have.
And now for a moment, I know there are pages from other times I may choose to come back and look into sometime. There are also blank pages representing my future. I have the power to co-create these pages in my future life any way I would like it to be. So I envision them filled with love and light and truth. And know that in this moment, with this powerful thought, I'm affecting my future and therefore my present. I take a moment and I give thanks for any guidance that I have received as I place the book lovingly back on the shelf. And if for some reason I have not received any guidance, I know it takes practice and I'm learning. But I now have a tool with which I can come and access all of the knowledge of my life and other lives. And so for this, I am grateful. And leaving this great hall of records now, I come back into this time and place, into my body. I do so giving thanks for eternal life and the life that is mine to give. And for all of the gifts that I have to express through it. In this moment, let us become aware of the power of loving relationship that spans time and space. We give thanks for eternal life and the life that is ours to give and for all of the gifts that we have to express through it. And we pray this in the name and through the power of the indwelling Christ. And so it is. Amen. When I heard that um, Kathy was going to be speaking about uh, reincarnation, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I thought of this song. Um, I, I always feel so lucky because I'm able to sort of uh, contemplate all week long what what would fit, and um, I f always feel like your message is even deeper. Um, from having done that. This is a Harry Chapin song that um, just seemed to strike a chord. Mm -hmm. Thought runs through my mind 
Beautiful song. What a perfect song. I've never heard that before. It's great for the theme. So my uh, title today is Reincarnation, a Unity Perspective. The current Dalai Lama was chosen in the traditional way. One of the wise men in Tibet had a dream that led to the house where a two-year-old boy lived. This boy was able to recognize the men who came as well as certain objects that had belonged to his predecessor, the 13th Dalai Lama. This boy passed all the tests that showed he remembered his past life and was selected on that basis. All cultures and religions have stories and beliefs about birth and death and life after death Unity has a particular teaching as well. One of the principles of unity is the law of mind action or the law of karma. Karma is Sanskrit for action. And it generally refers to action and reaction or the law of cause and effect. As we hold a thought in mind, which is the cause, so does it manifest and express in the world, which becomes the effect. But we can take that further and say that not only uh, or that not all effects are results of causes begun in this life, but they may go back further into other life experiences. Unity teaches that reincarnation is the most plausible explanation for eternal life and the seeming injustice in the world. There is no dogma. So if you're sitting here today and you do not believe in it, you certainly do not have to in order to be part of a unity congregation or a member in this spiritual center. I'm wondering how many of you do believe in it. Um, I know you, some of you don't have your videos on, but raise your hand if you do. I'm just curious. See all the hands. Okay, from what I can see, it's a high percentage. <laughs> you know, and, and it typically is in a unity congregation. Um, there's always a majority who do believe in it. As I said, if you're one of the ones who do not, you're welcome here. You can accept or reject anything I say. And yet the important thing always for each of us is to be open-minded. The definition of reincarnation, according to one dictionary, is rebirth in new bodies or forms of life, especially rebirth of a soul in a new human body. So as I was thinking of this talk about reincarnation and the idea of being reborn, this acronym just came into my head and just popped in my mind using the word reborn, R-E-B-O-R-N, realize eternity but open to reality now. Realize eternity, but open to reality now. So I wanna use this as a framework for the talk today since reincarnation is such a vast subject, where does one even begin? So the R in reborn stands for realize. Our life journey is all about realization, realizing our divine self, our oneness with God and one another, and while we're on this journey of realizing the divine self, we're learning to love ourselves. We're here to realize and love God, love ourselves and one another. So people who return from near death experiences tell us that in the closing moments of their earthly lives, they learn the most important thing we can do while here is learn to love. Now it now appears this is the only way we can turn the world around. So the second word in the acronym REBORN is eternity, realize eternity. 
And the definition of eternity is endless or immeasurable time. It's important for us to become aware of a vast universe, a cosmic perspective beyond our material existence that helps us through difficult times, helps us to know that there's more to life than just this outer reality. And life after death is one concept of eternity. Some people believe we're going to go to heaven eternally. Mark Twain said he could think of nothing more boring than sitting around all day in heaven playing a harp. <laughs> well, unity's perspective on eternal life is a belief in reincarnation. Now, I don't believe in reincarnation myself, but I did in my last life. Just joking. <laughs> so actually I do, but I see it also as a, a particular archetypal idea. I like the Bible saying, in my father's house are many rooms or many mansions. I think of it as one room of thought in the mind of God. There can be many archetypal ideas and reincarnation is one. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity taught, that there will even be a time when there is no more need for reincarnation, when we overcome death. Well, I've had a number of memories and regression experiences. And one example was my very first time at Unity Village, the headquarters for the Unity Movement. I had gone for a two week session of classes. And the first afternoon I met a man standing with a group of people in the cafeteria. And I learned that he did regression. And since I had experienced past life regression before, I decided to have him regress me. And it was amazing because I thought it had taken about 15 or 20 minutes. And it turns out, he told me it was 90 minutes long, an hour and a half. And I went straight to ancient Egypt and went into great detail describing aspects of my life and that experience. But what was so noteworthy for me was after I walked into the Uni Unity Village Auditorium for the first time, and there above the stage was a very large carving of the Egyptian wings, uh, which I did not know until that very moment is the symbol for unity. You know, I've had other regressions and I've become so interested over time that I learned to regress other people as well into their past lives. But let me interject a little historical background. Most of the Eastern world believes in reincarnation and the Western world has less believers because of the Christian church. Now there's nothing written to indicate Jesus ever spoke against it, quite the contrary. In his day, it's said that he lived and studied with the Essenes, the mystical community that lived by the Dead Sea and preserved the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they very much believed in reincarnation. And incidentally, Carol Niskern, the former spiritual leader at Unity North, will be teaching a three-week virtual class for us in July on the Essenes. So that should be very fascinating. So the subject of reincarnation was argued for 500 years after the death of Jesus before a church council decided to reject it. Prior to that, the first great exponent was a priest named Origen. He was the most important philosopher and the greatest Bible scholar in the early Christian church. So in the year 553, both he and reincarnation were condemned by the council called in Constantinople by the Emperor Justinian. The belief, though, still continued to grow, and by 1200 had become so widespread it almost overturned the Catholic Church. The Church had the power to determine what one next, one's next life would be like. So they had what they called the Doctrine of Apostolic Succession. It taught that Jesus had the power to forgive sins, which he then passed on to Peter, and Peter passed on to the popes and on to the priests. And the church had a treasury of merit. And when people behaved as they were supposed to, they were rewarded. They were given indulgences, they were called, which they could use in heaven. 
corrupt priests began to sell indulgences. This was like one's guarantee out after death. It was your, you know, your get out of hell free card, so to speak. So they could barter for time off in the next world in exchange for bad behavior in this one. So the belief in reincarnation stripped a lot of power from the church because it stressed personal responsibility. The corrupt priests wanted the power of life and death over the people, and they got this through selling indulgences. But reincarnation taught that this was unnecessary, that karma and grace would prevail. Well, the largest group that believed in reincarnation was called the Cathari, and they eventually threatened the existence of the church. So a crusade was started against them, and they were totally destroyed within 20 years. The belief in reincarnation persisted, and eventually the Inquisition was founded. And many do not realize that it was created mainly to root out the belief in reincarnation. The purpose was to frighten people into orthodoxy and it tortured and killed literally hundreds of thousands. So please realize the Catholic church was a product of its time. Protestants also killed many and not all people were corrupt. So this is not about a particular religion. People are still killing each other in the name of religion. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity said, the, tra the traditionally Christian Western world in general looks on re-embodiment or reincarnation as a heathen doctrine. Many people close the door of their minds to it without waiting to find out what message it may bring when interpreted in the light of truth. Jesus taught that rebirth or reincarnation is the unifying force of nature at work in its effort to restore humankind to its original deathless estate. Fillmore said a single span of life from the birth of an infant to the death of an old man or woman does not constitute all of our opportunity for living. Life is continuous and in harmony with the wholeness of being only when it is expressed in a perfect body. Hence, we must have a body in order to gain an abiding consciousness of life. So through, through repeated trials of living, we're finding out we must learn to control the issues of life when we're in the body. So reborn, realize eternity, but open to reality now. The next word is but, B-U-T. This can imply paradox in this way. We say there's the law of cause and effect, but something deep within us tells us we're free. There's a paradox. It really could be both and. We're, we're subject to the law and we're free. But all great universal truths are paradoxes. There's both law and grace. So um, law says we have to experience the effects of our actions, but there's also grace, which can save us from the worst of the effects. And we have the power to overcome our karma through a way that we can activate grace. And that way is forgiveness. This is our way of bestowing grace. And especially by forgiving ourselves, you know, I truly believe that the forgiveness of self and others is the key for getting off the karmic wheel of repeated lives. For example, if we are experiencing something in this life that may be the effect of a cause in another life, and we forgive ourselves, reaching back into time, even if we do not remember it, we can be freed in this now moment. Forgiveness transcends all the barriers of lives because it transcends time and space. And that is our key. So realize eternity, but open. The fourth word is open. To be reborn into a higher consciousness, we must open our minds and overcome fearful limiting beliefs. You know, one of the questions I always hear when someone is skeptical about reincarnation is, why is everyone a famous person in the past life? You were the king of Egypt or one of the apostles or you were Jesus or whoever it was. 
But if you read the research, there are many, many ordinary lives. Another question or concern, karma can be such a good excuse or rationalization. Oh, it's just my karma. Well, this is certainly not what unity teaches. Karma is never an excuse for lack of motivation of self or self-responsibility. People ask, what evidence is there about past lives? Well, there are many convincing case histories. There's a book called The Case for Reincarnation by the late James Dillett Freeman. He was the poet laureate of Unity who actually wrote our prayer for protection, many other poems and stories and writings. But on October 6th, or excuse me, on October 12th, 1926, he tells in his book about a little girl who was born that year to a couple who lived in Delhi, India. They named her Kumari Shanti Devi. When she was nine, she told her parents she was not Shanti Devi. She was Lugdi Shabi, and excuse my Indian pronunciation. She said she was married and she really lived in Mutra with her husband Kedar Nath Shabi. Mutra was about a hundred miles away. She said that in 1925, the year before she was born as Shanti Devi, she had died in childbirth. Naturally, having this little nine-year-old girl say this tended to upset her parents a bit. <laughs> well, an uncle decided to find out if it was true. So we wrote to, to discover if there was a Kedar Nath Chobi living in Mutra. It turns out there was. To make a long story short, the young girl was taken to Mutra. When she arrived, the train platform was crowded, but she recognized her former family who were waiting to meet her. She knew her husband instantly, her brother-in-law, her parents. She recognized her former house and even told her husband Kedar where she had buried money. She was able to converse with him about things that only the two of them knew about. So this is a very famous story in the field of paranormal occurrences, and there are many others like it. If one takes the time to do research, the stories are most convincing. Of course, we can say, well, we are all one with access to a collective mind. And yet, why are there such specific memories, especially of children? Now, some of us may remember other lives, but probably not in that kind of detail. So a question, what good can it do us to know about our past lives? Well, first of all, it can help resolve family problems. Secondly, can remove blocks, phobias, and fears. And third, it can help to heal us in the present and therefore the past and future. There is a, a man named Brian Weiss and he is a psychiatrist, a graduate of Columbia University and Yale Medical School, the former chairman of psychiatry at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami, Florida. He was a strict scientist who did not believe. He worked for years with hypnosis with difficult patients. And he tells in his wonderful book, Many Lives, Many Masters, of one time when he was working with a woman named Catherine. She was suffering from fears, phobias, paralyzing panic attacks, depression, and recurrent nightmares. And her symptoms had been lifelong and were worsening. A year of conventional therapy had not helped. So Brian hypnotized her and gave an open-ended instruction, go back to the time from which your symptoms arise. Instead of going back to early childhood as he had expected she would, she flipped back 4,000 years into an ancient Near Eastern lifetime where she had been drowned in a flood as her baby was torn from her arms. As she described her death, she was floating over it detached emotionally, which is what you do in regression so it doesn't have to be a reliving of pain or emotions. So during this session, Catherine remembered two other lifetimes. Needless to say, Dr. Weiss was shocked and skeptical. But Catherine's symptoms began to improve dramatically week 
by week as they worked together in this way. And then in one session, she changed his life forever. She was in the in-between lifetime, lifetime state and told him about the death of his father and his three-week-old son and what his son had come to teach him. It was so detailed and profound that in a moment of utter grace, all his skepticism left him. From that time, he has worked with thousands of patients, written books, blown the cover off of his traditional practice, and begun a whole new life. And many people have been healed from his work. Another book of his, Through Time into Healing, speaks of many case histories. I took a workshop from Brian Weiss some years back in San Francisco and found him kind, conscious, and very credible. I've had numerous experiences of healing through regression. One that explained my first divorce, it was a Mayan lifetime, an Italian and a Mayan lifetime with my first husband, Rick, and several others that explained physical traumas in this life, including a shoulder wound, a hip wound, and past issues with my lungs coming from other lives, especially in China. So we can open our mind to regression. It will seem, if you just have one for the first time, it will seem like you're making it up. Sometimes it feels that way. Some people maybe expect to go and feel like they're really there, but for others, it's just like remembering a dream or it feels like you're making it up. But you know, that's not what's important. That what's important are the symbols and the meaning of the story told. And because, you know, truly there's always great power and meaning in that. So realize eternity, but open to reality. The next word is reality. Unity teaches reality is the absolutely unchanging mind of God. And the true reality that is us is the Christ part of us, our divine consciousness. And it is the personality or the outer mass that we discard when we give up this lifetime, but it is the soul, the individuality that continues forward. Sometimes this reality is a mystery though. So we realize eternity, but we are open to reality now. And now is the last word, now. Even though we talk about investigating other lives, it is so important we stay centered in the now the only purpose really of looking back is to make a difference in our current reality in this now moment. Memory of other times is useful if, if it can help us to forgive, heal and love and understand ourselves and others more fully. The present Dalai Lama was appointed like his successors at age two, based upon his ability to recognize his loved ones and possessions from a past life. He once said, Conviction and rebirth could engender a universal love because all living beings in the course of their numberless lives have probably been our friends or even our beloved parents, children, brothers or sisters. This should encourage tolerance, forbearance, charity and compassion. And then he went on to say, one could add that the making of prejudice, prejudicial distinctions of race, creed, sex, color, and, and social conditions would cease when it is seriously considered that in prior lives, one may have been a member of other races, other religions, societies, sometimes a woman, sometimes a man, and that in the future, such transformations will continue. So as we continue, continue to follow the inner light, we will remember and believe that which is for our highest good. As we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and our neighbor as ourself, we can only create the best possible effects. And that in essence is to live under grace. So bless you as you go forth and try to determine some of those lives that can make a difference. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. That was beautiful. And I really like what uh, you said about being free 
in this now moment. Um, when I went away to college, my grandfather gave me a book by Tagore, and um, a lot of the quotes were taken from fans and silk uh, um, quotes on, on silk. And this one in particular um, said, the same sun is newly born in new lands in a ring of endless dawns. Um, and I love the idea of continual rebirth. Um, the song that I chose for today is uh, very much about that. It's called Feeling Good. Birds flying high You know how I It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea. You know how I feel River running free You know how I feel Blossoms in the tree You know how I feel It's a new dawn, new day New life for me And I'm feeling good mm -hmm. Dragonfly out in the sun you know what I mean, don't you? Butterflies all having fun. You know what I mean. Sleep in peace when day is done. That's what I mean. This old world is a new world and a bold world for me. And I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. Feeling good. Claire, this is the time in our service when we bless our offerings. Since we can't collect them live, we invite you to go to our website, unitynorthmn.org, or, cl or click on this QR code, or you can also find our address to mail a check if you wish. So let's say the offering blessing. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies. All that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful.
And you can join me in the um, offering song of My Gift Goes Forth. Okay, now we'll have the community news. More information about these events can be found on our website at unitynorthmn.org. Next Sunday, June 13th, Greg Hamlin, humorous singer and speaker, will be talking about the sacred and the silly. Um, let me interject here, no. So I've known Greg for many years. Since my early days of ministry, I've had him come to every church. He is fantastic. You don't want to miss him. Funny, um, wonderful, and a great singer, great humorist. Uh, he'll make you laugh. He'll lighten your spirits. So please be there next week. Don't miss him. Okay, thanks, Kathy. That should be wonderful. And the Unity North Community Gathering via Zoom will be happening Wednesday, June 9th from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. This is a good chance for everybody to get connect, more connected with the community and talk about issues that are coming up or on people's minds. So it's a connection and conversation about how we're doing collectively and personally with recent changes in safety protocols and how that's going to impact prospective stages of reopening. I hope everybody can make that. And healers, we would love to expand our healing team. So please contact Cindy Huberty, our new healing team leader at, there's the number there, 612-749-9914. If you have any questions or want to join the healers meeting and training session scheduled for Monday, June 28th at 6.30 PM. Beginning today, a healer is available. Nancy Hilvick, in addition to our prayer chaplain, Wendy Erickson, you'll be able to call a healer for long distance healing or a chaplain for prayer. Some classes coming up, lots of stuff going on. We got a book study group exploring our racism. That's gonna be happening the first Mondays during the summer starting tomorrow night and then July 5th and then August 2nd from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This study group emerged from the racism and white fragility class that was held earlier this year, but all are welcome to attend. The book that'll be discussed this summer is Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Akko. Please read part one before the first session. You can also find more information about that on the website. And Carl will be having a couple of, uh, of shaman classes this month, starting with June 15th from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Daylight Time via Zoom. And the Bible Myths, Metaphysics, and Archetypes with Reverend Kathy, four Wednesdays, June 16th, 23rd, 30th, and July 7th from 6.30 to 8 Central Daylight Time. We'll be exploring the important stories of the first four patriarchs of the Old Testament and their wives to understand our spiritual evolution. So I just want to thank everybody today. Thank you so much, Tracy and Martha, for uh, doing a wonderful job with the technology. And thank you, Noel, for your usual great job as worship assistant. And uh, we all just love Claire. So let's give Claire a warm hand for 
Well, thank you for your beautiful music. I love the way you did Feeling Good. That was a great rendition of it. That was just awesome. Loved it. And now uh, we'll speak our prayer for protection. We'll come up on the slide here. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now let's join together for our peace song. now we'll have social time before you log out please hang around if you want to visit and say hi to people i'm going to start out by saying i'm i didn't recognize sherry i was pointed out that sherry was trying to uh